let's look here at the bovine head. We got some superficial muscles here. The most dorsal of these right here is the levator labii superioris, which lifts the upper lip. The next one here is the caninus. And then we have the depressor labii superioris. We also have a depressor labii inferioris down here. This is the buccinator muscle. Over on this specimen, we can see a little bit of it. It's been cut away on, primarily on both of these specimens. Is the muscle that's running right in here, which would be the levator nasolabialis. Okay, we saw that nice on the horse, but not so much on this specimen. Okay, we can see here the dorsal buccal branch of the facial nerve. And let's come back to that. The ventral branch is going to run along in here. Let's see, we might have it on this specimen. You don't see it real well. But then we do have the prodiduct the facial vein and the facial artery running here under the mandible, masseteric muscle. Here's the sternomandibularis muscle coming up to the mandible. We see down in this region where we found the mandibular lymph nodes in the horse, here we see the mandibular salivary gland in the bovine coming all the way up here. The mandibular lymph nodes is this more grayish structure here near the angle of the mandible. And then we have a lot of parotid salivary gland here. We can see the parotid lymph node sitting right up here. And over by the wing of the atlas is going to be the lateral retropharyngeal lymph nodes. Okay, let us come up in here. Here we can see the external carotid artery giving off the caudal auricular before then giving off the superficial temporal which gives off our transverse facial running with that transverse facial is going to be our auriculotemporal nerve which joins our dorsal buccal here and then of course the maxillary is the other terminal branch of the external carotid artery okay up here we can see very nicely the corneal artery here and the corneal nerve Okay, landmark for finding those on a live animal is this temporal line right here or crest. You could palpate that and then you'd inject to anesthetize this just below it. And that would take away the sensation of the horn. So we look here now at the inner surface and we see that we have, just as we have in other species, we have a dorsal nasal turbinate the ventral nasal turbinate, we're going to have ethmoidal turbinates here, then we have our dorsal nasal meatus, our middle nasal meatus, and our ventral nasal meatus. Our ventral nasal meatus is going to continue then into the nasopharynx here. In the nasopharynx we should be able to find a opening into the auditory tube right up in through here let's now cover the tonsils we've got on the base of the tongue the lingual tonsils we have the tonsils of the soft palate here and then here we have the pharyngeal tonsils and if we look down in here we see this opening this opening here is the tonsillar sinus 
And if we were to cut through this here, we would see that surrounding that tonsillar sinus is the palatine tonsil. Okay. Here we see the torus linguae, which is unique to the cow of our domestic species. We see that the cheek have a lot of papillae on them. We do have a sublingual caruncle here. Upon that sublingual caruncle, as in the dog, we have both the monosomatic sublingual salivary gland and the mandibular salivary gland emptying upon that. Let's see, come back here. Here we see the medial retropharyngeal lymph nodes. Look at the larynx. Let's look at the one on the other side. So we have here the epiglottic cartilage, the thyroid cartilage, and then here and here the cricoid cartilage. We have the arytenoid cartilage here. with its vocal process and the vocal fold, notice that we do not have a laryngeal ventricle here, okay? So therefore we don't have a vestibular fold. So we have the vestibule here. Here is the glottis, so the space here is the rema glottidis, okay? Here we go down into the trachea. We can see nicely here the hyoid bone, okay, and also medial retropharyngeal lymph node, nice here. Let's come in here, look at this artery. So we've got the common carotid artery coming up, and it's giving off some branches to the larynx. Up here, we're going to see the The main branch here is going to be the occipital. We do see a remnant of the internal carotid. Now that, because these are young animals, may still be a little bit patent, but it is going to degenerate and just become a fibrous band here. And the main supply is coming from branches of the maxillary artery. We're still going to have the intracranial portion of the internal carotid, but this portion is going to be lost. We see the lingual facial artery here and the nerve running with it, coursing lateral to the external carotid artery is the hypoglossal nerve. The glossopharyngeal is going to run a similar course, but be more dorsal. This is it right here. This guy here is going to be the vagosympathetic trunk. Here we can see the separation of the vagus caudally and the sympathetic portion with the cranial cervical ganglia coming off that vagus nerve and coming down to the larynx is going to be the cranial laryngeal nerve which innervates the cricothyroidus muscle and the mucosa of the larynx. Okay, we can't follow that so far on this side, but we can then come back over to this side and see that external carotid coming up. We don't see the caudal auricular coming off here, but we do see nicely the superficial temporal and the maxillary superficial temporal giving off the transverse facial and then coming up here okay the other side we had a better dissection out of that corneal artery okay so we saw that already Let's see any else thing else we want to look on here. 
Okay, we don't have the laryngeal muscles dissected out, but we do have nicely seen here the cricoritinoideus dorsalis. Let's see if we can do a little dissecting. Yeah, so we've done a little bit of dissecting here. We can see the thyroid cartilage here. This would appear to be the thyroarytenoideus here. Remember, a portion of that thyroarytenoideus is that vocalis muscle located in here. Okay.